back to doing laid back. Laid back. Laid back. Laid back. Laid back. Laid back. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had... I just thought... I said laid back, and then instantly I thought of the song, uh, Lean Back. I'm a man of culture. I used to play it. But anyways, it happened. It finally happened. Guys over at Quarter Crew have finally managed to do an episode. Actually, a React series. But Scott Atkins finally managed to go down there. <laughs> this is great. All that's left is for Jackie Chan to show up. You know, I just really want Jackie Chan to show up, and I just want a Jackie Chan special. You know, where it's just like they react to all the stunts that Jackie Chan did over the years. Like, I'm like, uh, let's see, Drunken Master. Yeah, when, whenever I think of the er, best early Jackie Chan films, I think of, you know, Drunken Master is obviously the, the one that pops in my head. Uh, Police Story. No, actually, it's Drunken Master and Police Story and then Mr. Nice Guy. There's so many great things. Jackie Chan has done, like, over 140 films, if I'm not mistaken. It's crazy. And Scott Atkins, yeah, just, yeah, he's done lots of films, too. Sorry, uh... Yeah. yeah, someone picked a bad picture for the IMDb profile pic. Yeah, I mean, from like, look at all the stunts he's done over, well, he's mostly a stunt actor, but he's good at act doing stunts. Oh, The Medallion, I remember that movie. That That's the one with uh, Jackie Chan, obviously. But yeah, mostly a stunt performer. He's done a lot of films, you know. It just is that. So let's see. I'm looking. Yeah, he's done a lot of films, you know, but, you know, Scott Atkins is a badass. At, he's great at what he does, and, you know, instead of delaying the video too long, I'm going to react to it. Stuntmen react to bad and great Hollywood stunts, up to 26, featuring Scott Atkins. All right. Let's see what the good old fellas down a quarter have to give us. Down a quarter digital. As if the full screen just pops up. Okay, I said enough. We are joined by the legendary Scott Atkins. <laughs> He's done a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that one in a home movie that I made. Good. <laughs> oh, no. The first time I fought Jackie Chan. Oh, there's a story behind that. I need to tell you. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end to see how you can get 15% off. This is atrocious. <laughs> oh man. Scott, we love you, but as a brother, we want to make fun of you a little bit. <laughs> hey everybody, we are back with another wonderful episode of Stuntman React. We are joined by the legendary Scott Adkins. He actually came out and joined us. This is super cool. I'm actually a little nervous. Um, <laughs> I'm nervous too, Nico. Right, now that I'm here. <laughs> well, I would consider it an honor to be punched by Scott Atkins. I don't like being punched. But I'd be like, <laughs> Scott Atkins, would, can you please punch me in the Can you please punch me in, all right, just don't punch me in the stomach or around my special area. Okay, hold on. Just punch me, just like punch me in, right here on the cheek, please. And then he does a, Phew. you're awesome, man. I remember you, yeah, I think it would be an honor to, you know, even though I, uh, people hate getting hit, I think it would be an honor to get punched by Scott Atkins. Yeah, all right. Listen guys, I, I'm a fan of the show. I have to, uh, shame Eric's not here, so I'll get my own back on him, <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> well, we have some amazing clips we're going to be jumping into today. You fought against some of the most legendary martial arts stars of, of all time, you know, Donnie Yen, Tony Ja. Can't wait to hear what those experiences were like, but I also really want to dig into some of your fights and your experiences and like the stories that you have from your years of working in the business. My very first martial arts job was, was with your uncle. Oh, no shit. Yeah. It was a teaser trailer for Black Mass 2. It's a oh, pre-sale okay. yeah, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he worked me so hard <laughs> that I was almost physically sick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only time I've ever worked with him. Yeah. Thank yeah, yeah. 
fucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we starting with the one where I get the shit kicked out of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed you have a propensity for uh, being cast as a bad guy a couple times here. I gotta say, you have a very high-level beard, and I think the more... That is true. He is always cast as kind of like... Um... Yeah, he's always cast as the bad guy, obviously. That's just kind of the truth. But I bet he's a nice guy in real life. The more high level your beard game is, oh, the yeah. better you are being cast for a villain. Hey. Hold on. Uh, I gotta really pause the recording because an ad hit. I got hit by an ad. Uh, I'll shut up. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, it slowed down at two frames per sec. Yeah, I, I've tried everything I can. I, I give up. But yeah, there's like lots of actors that are like stunning, or like anyone who's like cast as a bad guy, but ends up, they're like the opposite of that. You know, just kind of that, their character. <laughs> I think uh, Noah something. I do know. Yeah, I'm just gonna continue the video. Oh, yeah. The better you are being cast for a villain. There you go. <laughs> this is for my new villainous part. I love how he barely flinches when you throw that first punch to test the range. Look how cool he is. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie Yen, the legend. You know, for me to be in like uh, what is a modern day kung fu movie was a big thrill because that's what you grow up watching and they, they don't make as many as they used to but to be in something like this which is like the, the best sort of Kung Fu franchise of, of modern day times. What a thrill. It's not easy when you walk in on day three, aching, <laughs> and they say, ah, oh, today's the day for all the kicks. Let's go. <laughs> day three is always the worst, you know, because you're doing it all day. You're doing it for 12 hours and you're full on. And that's the thing, if you're a fighter, which I'm not, but you know, you go in there for 25 minutes, you do your thing that's it you're done but the thing about making films is you, you're doing it for 12 hours and you can't stay warm for the whole time you're going to cool down and that's when you get the little tweaks and the injuries and then day two day three day four those tweaks are turning into proper problems that you've got to deal with you know i always see that bit where i do the back kick it looks like my uh Trousers have blown apart, but they haven't. <laughs> or maybe I'm always just checking out my ass. <laughs> no, it's not there, but I always just see the, see the split in the pants for some reason. Because that happens to me a lot in real life. Oh, I gotta imagine. Because yeah. I'm always going around pants. throwing kicks at people. What? That's true. What are your pants considerations? You must be like, you gotta reinforce. Oh, no. It is a consideration. Yeah. It's something you have to think about. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because the, the fight is not choreographed beforehand. In Hong Kong, they do it on the spot. And I know I'm the bad guy, and I know he's going to kick my ass. But I'm thinking, well, how is he going to kick my ass? What is going to be my fate? And at this point, when they're explaining that they're breaking my arm, and then he punches you in the face, and then he, then he hits you in the throat, and then he hits you in the nuts. And I'm thinking, <laughs> could I go out like any more of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> but that's... To God, if, if you went up against Donnie Yen, you'd easily lose. It'd be like, Donnie Yen challenges you. Me. Throws a punch. Donnie Yen... <laughs> Kicks my ass. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, hey, I love Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen is, is awesome. That's just the way they do it in Hong Kong. Very organic. But you have to be ready as a, as a performer to be shown the choreography there and then. And you watch it and you, you've got to pick it up pretty quick. And then you've got to get in there with Donnie Yen, one of the best guys ever, and do it at, you know, 100% speed and know that choreography like that. It's a stressful situation. How many takes does it take Donnie Yen to learn his choreography? No, it's yeah, just immediately. It's, that's the level. Hmm. These guys are the pinnacle of, of making martial arts fight scenes. Oh, there's a story behind that, I need to tell you. So the shot is he punches me, and then I go back and I kick him in the chest. Donnie comes up to me and he's like, I can just be this close to you when I punch you and then you're going to move back. And, he, and he, in the rehearsal, he did it so fast and it just literally touched my cheek. And I'm like, man. <laughs> and so on take number one, he hits me in the face really hard. <laughs> it's like, bang, whoa. And then, and then he did the kick. And he's like, no, you've got to, you've got to, once you get hit in the face, then you kick me in the chest. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but 
<laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> on the next take, take number two, I'm still a bit like freaks out. He does the punch, and I rush the kick, and I kick him straight in the throat. Oh, and that's the one that they've that's used. The right? they use. Yeah, straight in the throat. Straight in the throat. And that's the one that they've used. Yeah, straight in the throat. And he's like, ah, oh, you kicked me in the throat. You know? <laughs> and it's Donnie Yen, you know. He, he was fine. But then what they did is they put the camera over my shoulder, and he's going to do the punch oh, now. And I've just kicked just him gonna... in the throat. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, he's just gonna, he's just gonna smack me now. It's payback time, so I've accepted my fate, <laughs> and I'm just waiting for him to blast me in the face. All I can say is, thank you, Donny. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for not blasting me in the face after I kicked you in the throat. <laughs> I love it when you get a hard hit. It looks fantastic, yeah. and you know, to be on the receiving end of that is is an. That's the scene I remember seeing the, the filming of the, of the, the scene the scene from Creed. And it was like the shot that ends up being in the actual movie. Although I think this is a shot with the Phantom camera because, you know, Phantom cameras, you know, they're like the the successors to the, like, I think they're like post Photosonics cameras. But this is like Phantom shot right here. Get a hard hit. It looks fantastic. And, you know, to be on the receiving end. This is a, a Phantom shot. Hold on. to do a few things for the record this isn't coffee it's just tea it's night time let's continue end of that is, is another thing but if a stunt man comes up to me and says i'll, I'll take i'll take a proper hit for you scott i i'm not going to turn it down okay and i'll say great mate just put your face right there <laughs> and we're going to smash it for two for a second <laughs> But, it, you know, you, can never, you should never do that to a stunt guy that's not expecting it. Right. You know, that's not ethical, it's not cool. But those guys that occasionally say, I'm going to take one for the team there. I'm going I'm to give, give one to the gods of action. It's like, yeah, come on, because it looks great. I love it when you see Tony Jaa blast someone. <laughs> Donnie Yen, Samo Hung, there are those moments where they hit people hard. Have you ever volunteered to take a hard hit for, for the camera? <laughs> I remember <laughs> on The Shepherd saying to Van Damme, Sidekick me as hard as you can. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Scott. I said, no, it's fine. Because at the time, it's like, yeah, come on. <laughs> Let me just check the quality because it's like the time must be depending on connection. Oh, it's fine. Give me your best shot. I can take it. And I'm offering it to you, Jean-Claude, because you're my hero. So please, just smack me as hard as you can. So remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and you've fought so many big names in the world of martial arts cinema. Yeah, pretty much uh, everyone except for Bruce Lee. Have you fought Jet Li? Yeah. Unleashed. Like, the first time I fought Jackie Chan was in a film called The Medallion. I'm yeah. fighting him on this boat. And I knew that if I did a good job as the henchman for this little piece of the fight, that they were gonna give me the big end fight with Jackie Chan. So there's a bit where I, we throw these punches and then I've got to do this back kick. But I remember just being so stressed out because it's Jackie Chan, you know, and his yeah. first film we're done with him. You don't mean he doesn't want ends. some jackass coming in and blasting him with the back yeah. kick. So it's very stressful. So on the first take, I hit him too lightly. Samuel Hung's the fight coordinator, and I hear him shouting over from the back, HIT YOU HARDER! <laughs> MORE POWER! <laughs> and then one of Jackie Chan's uh, stunt team come up to me, and they say, Be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So I've got Samuel there shouting, HIT YOU HARDER! <laughs> and I've got the stunt team looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> so Scott, you were one of the most requested guests on our show, and somehow through the power of the comments, you have manifested yourself into this space. I came through the comments. <laughs> yeah. So if there's somebody else that you would really like to have on this show, please leave a comment below suggesting them. So about equilibrium when I was 16 years old. It's gun cutter, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's complete farce. It's all sorts of goofy. <laughs> the, the, the thing that you got to give Christian Bell credit for is he is acting his ass off. It's like he's <laughs> bought in so hard. He's just trying to remember the choreography. It's not his fault. <laughs>
hard. He's just trying to remember the choreography. It's not his fault. <laughs> All right, I gotta like really stop. I'd help my my mom with something. Back to the video now. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is, oh, nice. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> this movie is designed to hit every neuron in a teenage boy's mind. He's done a yeah. backflip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done that one in a home movie that I made. It's available on YouTube called Gangsters. <laughs> Definitely inspired by John Woo, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Dude, I love John Woo. Yeah. John Woo captures a bit of that. Also, an interesting thing about... Uh, Promised I wasn't gonna pause much, but actually the cinematographer on uh, Equilibrium was uh, Dion Beebe, who's like the the frequent cinematographer for Rob Marshall. But like he also shot movies like uh, after like he would shoot Edge of Tomorrow and Thirteen Hours. Thirteen Hours was a great film, and um, I'll say it: his cinematography was easily the saving grace of Gemini Man. It was one of the better parts of that movie. I I saw that movie in theaters. I thought it was okay. I, uh, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Definitely inspired by John Woo, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Dude, I love John Woo. Yeah. John Woo captures a bit of that Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan, Yun Biao like world of yeah. action, but he's not martial arts. He's into you know the gunplay and the pyrotechnics and special effects. Well, he came from making martial arts films. Yeah. There were a lot of swordplay movies that he made, and if you look at his the way he uses the gun, it's like the gun is an extension of your hand, as if the, uh, a sword is. Yeah. yeah. So you know the way he's using the guns like that. I mean, obviously, it doesn't make any sense in terms person, of your aim. You're the only other person who's ever said that. Because I've th I've thought about that when I saw the Hard Boiled. Because you know, with a gun, you're trying to not be where the gun is pointing, right? So it's just like a sword. You don't want to be where the sword is pointing. And you know, you can see that in the choreography. And I've never heard anybody else put it into words except for you. <laughs> you know That's what's because, up. Yeah, come on. You know what's up too. It, that same extension, John Wick One's very much was using the gun as essentially an explosive close range punch, right? The yeah. trick that they figured out, I think, for the John Wick movies was they were like, oh, we compress it and we go very close quarters with it and we treat gunshots and gunplay as essentially punches. It's the same concept yeah. uh, as a fight scene, it's cause and effect. Yeah. So in a fight scene, you see the punch hit the guy, you see the guy react. Yeah, exactly. all in a I'll say one thing about John Wick, which was surprising. I had actually seen the first movie because the second movie was coming out. I thought, you know, and I'd heard good things about the first movie. Then I saw the first movie, I was like, wow, I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was, like, really, really good. The first John Wick movie, I, I think, okay, for me, the ranking goes John Wick 1, then, uh, Chapter Three, Parabellum, and then Chapter Two. It, it's it's kind of like the Indiana Jones trilogy of like say um, currently the jo Indiana Jones trilogy of like action you know, thrillers, especially because I did not expect that movie to be as good as it was. Because you know you you see those types of movies, you hear it, it's like that's eh, a straightforward plot, it's straightforward action. It's not just that; it is great action. I mean, I can't express how much I love those John Wick movies. One shot with yeah. the gun. You see the gun fire, and you see the guy getting shot in yeah. the same shot. Yeah. If you put an edit in there and cut to the guy getting shot, it's, it's just yeah. not as good. Sergio Leone, when he came out with The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, they would never show the guy getting shot, the gun and the guy getting shot in the same shot before that, but he didn't know about that. So... It was quite shocking to see the gun and the guy getting shot in the same, but you know, everyone loved it yeah. because it was just, yeah, more visceral and just looked yeah. amazing. And that's what John Woo does. Essentially, it's a lot of cause and effect, all the just shit blowing up yeah. around him and chaos that. And yeah, chaos, yeah. Wait! Yeah. This is Wait. 1989 Sammo Hung directed movie called Pedicab Driver with some brilliant fights. And Sammo. He's known for hitting people hard. Yeah? Yeah. Good time! Oh, oh, no! No! <laughs> With the heel! With the heel! His whole body yeah. gets off the ground. Now watch this guy next. Watch the next guy. Oh, no! 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 Oh my gosh. All the way back. Those, so this is what I'm talking Even that guy, the oh elbow my connects. God. The yeah, elbow connects yeah, yeah, to that yeah. guy. <laughs> but look at the camera work there. This panning across yeah. there as he gets hit, and here is going back. 
but look at the camera work there. This panning across yeah. there as he gets hit, and here is going back there and back Just here one, again. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all very interesting. Watch this bit. <laughs> straight, straight in the ass. <laughs> Secret technique. That'll get you out of that situation, guaranteed. I felt that. Guaranteed. <laughs> It's the, this is the golden age. This is when action, for me, was, was at its very best. And I don't think it's, it's going to be equaled. The, the effort, the, the quality of the stunts, the physical stunts that you wouldn't do now because you can do CG and everything. But they're just putting their bodies on the line back then because there was no other way of doing it other than you've got to do it in camera. Yeah. And in those days in Hong Kong, it wasn't about you know, car chases and big explosions because they didn't have the budget that you know, Hollywood had. It was all about fighting yeah. and physical stunts and that's why you got those crazy stunts where it looks like yeah i remember this and yeah i remember there were certain times when jackie chan came into hollywood and lots of filmmakers were obviously fans of jackie chan and so they just decided to make references to like some of jackie chan's recent is this a armor of god i don't know i don't know if it's armor of god but this scene is like crazy like, all those sparks going out there, and I'm proud, if I were Jackie Chan, and if I was a pro doing that, I'd be like, God, I hope I don't get a scratch. My people have died, <laughs> because that's, that's what, how they were trying to up the ante and compete with Hollywood movies. Yeah. So I don't think we'll get it again with CG and everything. The superhero movies, they take care of that quota, right? Yeah. You're getting to see your fight scenes and action stuff in the, the superhero movies, yeah. so there's less. That's the thing with, the difference between you know, like, the two Captain America films that the Russo brothers directed versus the two Avengers films. The difference is, like, with Avengers, there's going to be, like, lots of expansive stuff. But, like, what made the Winter Soldier so special was that they went with very much practical effects. And there was a lot of emphasis on um, stunts. And if I remember correctly, one of the stunt uh, coordinators on that movie, um, Spiro, Spiro Rosados is, is his name. And yeah, but like a lot of the stunts were awesome, you know, and also they brought in Thomas Robinson Harper, who was a stunt coordinator on the first two Iron Man films. They brought him for the stunt to do coordination for Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And the thing is, with Winter Soldier and Civil War, I think it has some of the best stunt action because it's clearly all practical. And um, that's something that I loved about Winter Soldier, about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, was that it, it felt kind of like, yeah, it, it had that very Winter Soldier-esque vibe. <laughs> a, a $150 million budget on that show is like, you can see how the money went to that. That's just crazy. You know, I feel like in a day and age where you can do CG and stuff like that, the only movies that I've seen that have done it successfully with stunt coordination with the you know, while also adding a few CG enhancements, Marvel movies and Zack Snyder films. Because for some reason, Zack Snyder, like, you look at some of the work, more so in Batman v Superman, is where I think Zack Snyder has directed some of the best action. At least. Because, like, that, that warehouse fight scene is, like, whether you like the movie or not, that is, like, one of the highlights of the movie. It is, like, yes, this is Batman. This is Batman. Don't tell me that's not Batman. That's Batman. Can't believe I... Uh, I mean, the video's almost two minutes over, so... But, yeah, I wish this video could go long, but I'd have to watch that video by myself as, like, casual. Makes me wonder why you even started doing reactions. <laughs> martial arts movies. But then you've got stuff like John Wick, and you've got these directors coming through now that have come from... Also, that's interesting. I mentioned Captain America Civil War. Uh, Chad Stahelski uh, and David Leach, David Leach and, Pat, and Chad Stahelski, uh, they were also second unit directors on that, uh, you know, on Captain America Civil War, because I think it was because of the film's uh, scheduling, because they had a certain time to come out. And, man, you know, I, I always keep saying, like, Marvel movies and Bond movies have this weird thing where it's like, the one thing they have in common is that they are shooting multiple units 
at the same time. So you're going to have your main unit, you're going to have your second unit, you're going to have your aerial unit, you're going to have your VFX unit, your, what, you have like 10 units going at the same time. There have been like, I think, 10 units on like every Bond film, and you know. That's something I can appreciate, is like how they sometimes, you know, um, yeah. And, um, I really got nothing left to say. I am thankful for Stahelski and Leach saving action films overall, you know, because with John Wick, it was like, yes. I'm still trying to get one of my, my friend's uh, dad, one of, yeah, someone I know very close, to watch those movies. I'm like, you know, you got to watch those John Wick movies because they're awesome. They're, I mean, <laughs> I remember showing a, a clip from John Wick, I think it was the first scene, the the house shootout, um, in the first movie to one of my friends. Then I showed him the scene from Taken Three, where it's like fourteen cuts, you know, and they don't even last. They don't even last half a second. And my friend was like, "Yeah, that's bad." It, Taken Three was bad overall, but yeah, let's just finish this. The world of stunts, right? Like Sam Hargrave with Extraction, Chad Stahelski, John Wick, David Leach, Deadpool 2, and Hobbs and Shaw. So we're getting these new guys coming through from the stunt world that understand this, mm -hmm. and they're putting their version of it. So actually, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> also, Extraction was really good. You know, I mean, given Sam Hargrave, first first movie, I'm like, wow, that like the action was really good. Like that that one that. Like that eleven minute wonder was like some of the best action I I've ever seen. Man, I I really want to rewatch it again. I I don't know. I rarely do I watch a lot of films on Netflix, but you know, Extraction was a pretty good film. <laughs> so to have a professional who is so well versed in this world share their knowledge with us, it's an it's a it's a gift. And Scott actually has a whole YouTube channel. It's uh, The Art of Action, Scott Atkins, The Art of Action. There's a link in the description below. If you like this show, you definitely need to go check it out because it is Scott talking with some of the most accomplished martial artists and stuntmen, actors, stuntwomen in the world today and revealing really in-depth insights. So if you enjoy this show, you think this is cool, well, go check out Scott's show because it's, it's this, but even more. It's like this, but better. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not a stunt guy. As much as I'd like to, it'd be pretty cool. I've tried, but no. I'm here to talk about today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon's out there disrupting the industry, making earbuds that are half the cost of other premium audio brands. They're really small, they're really compact, they're noise isolating, so they'll literally sit in your little ear canal and block out all of the sound from around you. So if you like to ride your bike through the wilderness, Raycon is for you. There's no dangling wires. You got a bunch of different fits and sizes. Also, they come in a bunch of different colors. I know you might be all about that bass. Well, guess what? These Raycons will give you six hours of that bass. And let's say you don't want them anymore. You need some. I'm sorry. It's just this always happens. It's probably why I don't enjoy doing reactions as much as I don't quit. I should always learn never to quit my day job. Something different. Well, you got a 45 day free return policy. Click that link in the description or head on over to buyraycon.com slash quarter crew and you will get 15% off your first purchase of Raycon earbuds. It's a pretty sweet deal. That's 15% off if you go to buyraycon.com slash quarter crew or just click that link in the description. Well, Scott, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Freddie, thank you guys. always a good time. Thanks for joining us as no well. No problem. Thanks for having me, Nico. Can I just say that it's an absolute pleasure to be on. I watch the show a lot. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. I, I've learned quite a few things really? myself, and I thought that I knew everything. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, got these weird uh, music video things. But, yeah. Another great episode in. The fact that they actually brought uh, Scott Atkins in, Scott Atkins in, it's like amazing. Cause like, <laughs> like I said, all that's left is for like Jackie Chan to show up, and it all comes full circle, like that. Yeah, thirty minutes in, I managed to finish. Uh, yeah.
All right, well, um, huh? Blush, uh, uh, sorry, I've got a lot of these videos I'm trying to remove. The, the YouTube algorithm, uh, hates me sometimes. Uh, critical drinker. Um, no, no thanks. I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, tell us why. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just really trying to minimize a lot of the videos because, like, there's so much. See, so little time. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Got at least one more video I'll try and record. So this was Stuntmen React to Bad and Great Hollywood Stunts featuring Scott Atkins. I'll leave a link to the original video down below. Link to my Instagram. Link to Corridor Crew. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, Godspeed, everyone. Take care.